Member statements. The member for Kingston and the Islands. Thank you, Speaker. <clears throat> I rise today to recognize something with somber purpose that November is Domestic Violence Awareness Month. On average, one woman is killed by an intimate partner every six days in Canada. Indigenous women and girls are disproportionately victims of all forms of sex and gender-based violence and are six times more likely to be victims of femicide. We are measured by our treatment of our most vulnerable speaker, the most vulnerable members of our community, and here we continue to fail. It is imperative that we commit to protecting and supporting vic victims of family violence and I would urge this government to hear the pleas of women's centres, asking them to commit to long-term stable funding needed to do life-saving work. COVID-19 has amplified the terror of domestic violence, Speaker. Rates of violence have ballooned by 20 to 30 per cent during the pandemic. And we know that during lockdowns, women were disproportionately affected. We failed to consider the impact of the lack of access to peace bonds for those in danger or that some women may not even have the freedom to get themselves vaccinated, Speaker. I want to thank you for giving me this opportunity to recognize this month. It's a privilege to be able to advocate for the women and children who suffer all forms of domestic violence. And I would urge this government to lift the building of funding precarity for women's centres and the courageous frontline social workers who do this daunting work. Thank you, Speaker. Member Statements. The member for Stormont, Dundas, South Glengarry. Thank you, Speaker. <clears throat> I rise today to shine a light on a new chapter in the history of the Cornwall Police Service. On October 22, Chief Danny Aikman began a well-earned retirement after almost 40 years of excellent police work. Chief Aikman's skill and expertise allowed him to successfully navigate through the rapidly changing times of police work. And I want to congratulate him on his long-time service to his community. And he passed the baton on to uh, Deputy Chief Shauna Sproward, who became the first female Chief of Police in the City of Cornwall. Like her predecessor, she's a graduate, graduate of Rotman School of Management and has already utilized these skills to develop and put in place several important policing and community initiatives. And I've had the chance to work with the new Chief on her pre in her previous role, and I know that her team from first approach will make her an important addition to the Eastern Ontario Security Network, working together with our RCMP and neighbouring Mohawk and OPP police services. The residents of Cornwall are in good hands, and I wish her the very best of luck in her new role in serving her community. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Member Statements. The member for Scarborough Southwest. You, Speaker. The Royal Canadian Legion Hall contacted our office to get help for a senior, a veteran, living in a TCHC building. For months, his unit was horribly infested by bedbugs. The Legion offered to help pay rent for a new unit, furniture, carpeting, to fix this situation. However, Toronto Community Housing informed that it could take up to one year for Ralph to be moved into another unit, despite the infestation. Because of the terrible conditions, care workers stopped coming to his unit to take care of Ralph. The infestation got worse, which led him to stop eating. His family also offered to pay for the services to clean his unit, but TCHC could not relocate him or coordinate cleaning services. As soon as my office received the case, we started coordinating. But, Speaker, it was too late. Ralph was already suffering from severe anemia. He passed away. Ralph Mus George Musgrove. Ralph George Musgrove, a senior veteran who honorably served his country, passed away from bed bug anemia in his home. This is the reality of many senior veterans, especially those living in our collapsing social housing system, Speaker. Lack of proper services, units falling apart or infested, decade-long wait lists. How did Ontario, one of the most prosperous provinces in this country, let things get so bad? Why are our honourable veterans spending their final years in such painful and undignified conditions? Speaker, for Ralph, for the thousands of veteran seniors across Ontario and for their families, we must do better. I would like to thank the Royal Canadian Legion Halls for their commitment to helping Ralph and to Darlene Kaufman, Ralph's daughter, for letting us remember her father in the legislature today. On November 11th, we will honour and remember Ralph and all the veterans who sacrificed, served and continue to serve our country, lest we forget. Thank you very much. Member statements. 
The member for Perth Wellington. Uh, thank you, Speaker. Speaker, good news out of Perth Wellington. Uh, Louise Marshall Hospital in Mount Forest recently completed a major expansion project. The new emergency room and ambulatory care is, is a major investment in rural health. It is an investment in future generations who will live and work in our community. People uh, who will need them, uh, people will need them, uh, these modern health care facilities. I was honored to attend the grand opening on September the 8th. There are so many people to recognize for the success of this project. Mayor Andy Lennox, the town and township and county councils, Dale Small and the North Wellington Health Care Board, outgoing CEO Steve Street and the new CEO Angela Stanley, Dr. Chris Rowley and all the health care professionals and hospital staff, Bob McFarlane and the campaign committee and all those who contributed, the Louise Marshall Hospital Foundation and the broader community. Projects like these do not happen without community support. This project had that and then some. I've been pushing for this project ever since I was first elected from opposition, uh, from opposition and from government. I'm grateful for the support we received along the way from the ministry and so many others. I especially want to thank our Minister of Health for approving this project and her interest in it ever since her visit to the hospital eight years ago. And so again, I want to thank all those who worked so hard over so many years to make this project possible. Be proud of this accomplishment and be proud of our community. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you very much. Member statements. The member for Nickel Belt. Thank you, Speaker. On Thursday, November 11th, multiple branches of the Royal Canadian Legion in my riding will be holding events to recognize Remembrance Day. Residents of Nickel Belt have always selflessly answered the call. So we have many veterans from the Second World War all the way to the Afghanistan War. I want to encourage everyone to get out and show these service people the respect they have earned, putting their lives in harm's way for our safety, for our prosperity. The Royal Ca Canadian Legion's branch in Lockerbie, in Capriol, in Chelmsford, and in Falconbridge will hold in-person events starting at 1045 on Thursday, November 11th. Branch 503 in Onaping is starting their ceremony at 1.45 in the afternoon at the Onaping Community Centre, and the Sudbury Wolves will also do a ceremony at 7 o'clock this Friday night. If this past year has taught us anything, it is the importance of people who sacrifice their safety to protect others. Our veterans have done this without questions for decades, and I am honoured to recognise their sacrifices this Remembrance Day and every day. I hope you will join me. Lest we forget, we will remember them. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you very much. Member Statements, the member for Ottawa South. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I want to say a few things about mandatory vaccinations. I know we've been going back and forth on this for several months now. And it's hard for me to understand why the government says that the same rules that don't apply in long that apply in long-term care don't apply in hospitals or home care or in our schools or in child care. And the latest thing is the government doesn't want to put COVID-19 vaccinations on the list of universal vaccines that we have in schools. And that's a real head scratcher as well too. Our kids are vulnerable. I think it's reasonable for parents to expect that the government is going to move to protect their kids in school. Now, those universal vaccines in schools, we have a way, they've worked for 40 years, 40 years. And we have a way of dealing with that and families. But here's the thing that's being missed. The tools that are in that act allow for contact tracing and very rapid movement to prevent an outbreak. And guess who they protect the most? Not the kids who've been vaccinated, but the kids who are unvaccinated. So the government's leaving this tool on the table, and that's the wrong thing to do. It's not good for families, and it's not good for kids. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Member Statements, the member for Ottawa West Nepean. Thank you, Speaker. 
On December 31st, Kevin Cohane will be retiring as president and CEO of the CHEO Foundation. Kevin joined the foundation 20 years ago, and he has served as president for the past nine years. During that time, the foundation has grown in substantial ways. It has continued to fulfill its important mandate of ensuring that every child in Eastern Ontario can live their best life. In 2001, when Kevin joined the foundation, they raised $12 million. Over the 20 years since, donations have increased as the foundation team, under Kevin's leadership, sought innovative ways to reach donors. Last year, Speaker, the foundation pulled in $44 million. That means more kids receiving the critical care they deserve, more medical equipment, more world-class research, and a renewal of the CHEO campus. Now, Kevin would be the first to say that none of this would have been possible without the incredible community of support in Ottawa. Co-workers I spoke to all mentioned that at the heart of Kevin's leadership was a firm belief in the strength of the team. But what is undoubtedly true is that Kevin's humble and tireless leadership has helped steer the foundation to greater success. His devotion to helping kids, as well as his passion to tell Chio's story, is evident to all that meet him. As Kevin prepares to step down, I'd like to sincerely thank him on behalf of the thousands of kids and families that have benefited from Chio's exceptional care. Enjoy your well-deserved retirement, and thank you from everyone in Ottawa. Thank you very much. Member statements. I recognize the member for Essex. Uh, thank you very much, Speaker. Uh, like my colleague uh, across the aisle, I too have a, uh, a special uh, uh, accommodation today to recognize uh, Janice Kaffer, who is the CEO and president of Hotel Du Healthcare in Windsor, who is retiring. Uh, after 37 years in the healthcare field, uh, mostly as a nurse, uh, our region in Windsor and Essex County has been well served by Janice's leadership, especially during the last uh, several uh, years and months throughout the COVID pandemic. Janice has been a champion for social justice and anti-poverty measures, as well as uh, mental health supports for our community. She has spearheaded so many different uh, uh, services through Hotel Du uh, Grace Healthcare uh, to, to support people in our community uh, who have suffered and continue to suffer from uh, mental health issues. She uh, has exemplified leadership in our community throughout COVID and led her team uh, to supporting uh, all regions of our community. We wish her well and thank her so much for that leadership and also welcome and thank uh, her, the new president of Hotel Du, uh, Grace Healthcare, Bill Mara, who is the acting vice president of Hotel Du. Uh, and who has enormous uh, experience in leadership as a previous city councillor. Bill is a great friend of ours, and we are uh, so uh, thankful for him accepting this new role and confident that uh, he will lead our health care system into the future post-pandemic and support the needs of our entire community. Best wishes to Janice, her family, and I know she, uh, she's going to spend a lot more time with her grandkids, and best wishes to Bill as well as uh, he enters into his new journey. Thank you. Thank you very much. Member Statements. The member for Mississauga, Aaron Mills. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. November is Diabetes Awareness Month. I want to recognize the challenges and the courage of over 1.5 million Ontarians living with diabetes and the many millions of Ontarians with pre-diabetes. Mr. Speaker, this year also marks a global milestone in the diabetes world as this is the centennial anniversary of discovery of insulin right here in Ontario. The discovery of insulin has saved millions of lives around the world. Thankful we are, we have come a long way in this hundred years and innovative health technologies have drastically improved the lives of Ontarians with diabetes. One of these game-changing technologies that the Ontario government invested in 2019 has been the freestyle Libre Flash glucose monitoring system. This system allows accessing of glucose data in real time by scanning with a swipe of this of your phone, and has enabled Ontarians with diabetes to receive care through remote patient monitoring and virtual diabetes care. This is the care of the future. Ontario is only one of the first provinces 
Providing flash glucose monitoring technology, the province also has the most widespread access in Canada. That's something all members of this legislature should be proud of, Mr. Speaker. We are the leader in Canada, and I'm confident that we will continue to lead in helping Ontarians with diabetes. Thank you. That concludes our member statements for this morning. And before